Hi guys. So today you're working with word problems. I know your favorite. But with these functions, you really have to pay attention to how much information is given to you within the problem because a lot of times they give us a lot of clues and hints that help us work through it. So normally I would have you guys um, read the problem to me, but obviously I can't since I'm not there. So I'll just start. A ball is thrown into the air with an initial velocity of 22 meters per second. The quadratic function h of t equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 22 t plus 5.5. It represents the height of the ball above the ground. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. It represents the height of the ball above the ground in meters with respect to time in seconds. Okay, so determine h of 3. All right, h of 3. Now you are going to have to use your calculators. So if you don't have them already, pause this video, go grab them, and I'll try and help you walk through them. So eight, determine h of 3. So I want you to think about what exactly is the 3 replacing. So if I look back at my original function, h of t, so 3 is replacing t. So I'm talking about 3t. Time, t is time in seconds, so after 3 seconds. So we want to figure out what's happening at 3 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and just plug that in. So I'm replacing all of my t's with 3. And now I need to use my calculator. All right, so even though we're using our calculator, order of operations will always take precedence. So I'm looking at my function, and I notice my parentheses, there's nothing to do inside, but I do have a squared. So I'm going to go ahead and square my 3. So 3 squared is 9. And then I'm going to multiply that by a negative 4.9 and there is a little negative button on your calculator and that gives me negative 44.1 so now I'm just gonna add up my other terms so 22 times 3 so plus 66 and plus, plus 5.5 gives me a total of 27.4 so walk through help each other out if you need to I know we haven't really gotten to use calculators yet this year so everybody's probably excited um, so that's my function but the biggest thing I want you to do is explain what it represents use the function to help you explain so it says h of 3 well what does h stand for h is the height so the height of the ball The height of the ball after, whoa, why the heck did that move? It's weird. So the height of the ball after how many seconds? Well, h of 3. So the height of the ball after 3 seconds. Seconds, right? Yeah, t in seconds is 27.4 what? Look back in your problem. Height is measured in meters, so 27.4 meters. Yes, if you had a question like this on the test and you only solved the function but you didn't explain it, you would definitely not get full credit. So that is very important. That's half of the battle with these is being able to explain what they mean. So use the function rule to help you out. Oh, that's bugging me. I have to move that. All right, so at any point, if you need um, Miss Lux to pause this or go back so you can hear something again, just let her know, okay? So the graph below represents the height of the ball with respect to time. So we're looking, we're using this graph to answer these questions. So part B says, what is a reasonable domain? Again, what is domain? Domain, we talked about yesterday, domain is our x values. So what is a reasonable domain? So I'm looking at my x axis, but I'm also paying attention to my graph. So what is the smallest x value? Now remember, x value, that's talking about time. So what's the smallest time that I could have to throw a ball? Well, can I have negative time? No, definitely not. So my smallest time is zero. And I'm going to follow my graph over, and my largest time, 
Um, I want to say that's about, I don't know, 4.6, 4.7, something like that. So my time, or my x, is between 0 and 4.7. Now I need you to think about something that we did last week. How do we write that x is between 0 and 4.7? Think about what kind of symbols can we use to represent that. So hopefully you're thinking back to, I've had some responses today about number lines, absolutely true. Um, interval notation, yes. What do both of those go with? Inequalities. So I can make this a compound inequality because the x is less than or equal to 4.7 and greater than or equal to 0. That is my domain. So when we move to range, now we're going to focus on the height of the graph. We're looking at our y values. So what is the minimum of our graph? Now I have this minimum, which is a little bit lower than 6, but that's not my true minimum. My graph also goes down here to 0. Because remember, I'm talking about y, so I'm looking at the y-axis. The minimum is 0. And what's the maximum? Look at that graph. Now 33, even though it says 33 on the y-axis, 33 is not the true max. That maximum is the peak of our parabola. That's what those U-shaped look like. That's a parabola. So the peak is actually right here at about 30. So the y is falling between 0 and 30. And go ahead and put in your inequality signs. Okay. So that's your domain range. You've used your graph. Now there's a lot that we just did with that one problem. So when you're doing tonight's homework, you can try it on your own or you can use the Algebra Nation video to walk you through. Tonight you're doing Algebra Nation Section 3, Topic 2. So absolutely you can use that video. Alright, now number two. On the moon, the time and seconds it takes for an object to fall a distance d in feet is given by the function f of d equals 1 and 11 hundredths times the square root of d. Whoa, that was a lot. All right, so what are we talking about here? On the moon, the time it takes, so we're talking about time. Oh, highlighter. Time it takes for an object to fall fall a distance d. So we're still talking about a distance falling, okay? Um, so determine f of 2. So f of 2 equals 1 and 11 hundredths square root of d. And we have replaced our d with 2. So when I go to plug this into my calculator now, if you're using one of my calculators to do a square root of 2, first you have to hit the 2 and then push the square root button. If you look at your calculator, it's right below tan. And you sh when you hit that, you should get 1.4142, yeah, 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 a bunch of numbers. Okay, and then it tells us we're going to multiply this by 1 and 11 hundredths. This is so important, guys. Do not round until the very end. So you're going to leave that crazy number in your calculator and you're just going to press the multiply button and 1 and 11 hundredths. You should then get um, f of 2 is about, I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth, so 1.57. If you're not getting that, ask a neighbor to help. Now, Still, we have to explain what it represents. So f of 2, I know 2 is d. d is my distance. Okay, so, but what is f? f doesn't make sense with this problem. I hate when they do that. I like to use variables that make sense. That's what I'm always telling you guys to do. So f so my other thing is time. So I guess F is standing for time. So time after two, what, two feet? So 1.57. So it takes how long? It takes 1.57 seconds to do what? Well, again, we're falling a distance of two. So it takes 1.5 seconds to fall 
two feet. Man, do you see how these can get a little confusing? So you really have to read and I would highly suggest highlighting, okay? It'll help you keep those things that are changing. It'll help you keep them straight. All right, on to part B, the Imbrium Basin is the largest basin on the moon. Okay, so again, you know me, I got to draw to make sense of things. So here's my beautiful moon and I have a big old basin in it. So a reasonable domain for the height above the lowest point on the basin. So height above the lowest point, okay, is given by zero or D, so the distance, what is that? Distance below, oh no, distance above the lowest point. So the lowest point of my basin, well, that's gonna be the zero. And what's the highest point of my basin? I want you to think about that for a minute. How do you read that number? I know, you guys got this far, you can totally do that. So three, comma, comma, so that basin, 3,805,774. Good gracious, that's crazy. So what is the lowest point, the point, the height above the lowest point? So we go from zero to 3,805,000. So what does this tell you about the basin? Well, I'm looking at my diagram and it's telling me how deep that basin is. So how deep is the basin? Well, the basin, is 3,805,774, this is feet, right? Let me look back, distance and feet, yes. Feet deep, that's crazy. Now, next it asks us, how long would it take a rock to drop from the rim? So from up top to the bottom of the basin. Hmm, well, what do I have here? What information was given? The distance. It's 3,805,774 feet. Craziness. So we're going to plug that in for the D, for the distance. So F of 3,805,000. Oh, yeah, this is a whole lot of numbers. Equals 1 and 11 hundredths times the square root of 3,805,774. Crazy. Okay, so when you go to plug this into your calculator, yes, you are going to put 3805774. All righty. Then you hit the square root button. Do not erase it. Leave that crazy number that shows up in your calculator. Then multiply that by 1 and 11 hundredths. You should get that it is about 2,165. Point, I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth, so 0.43 seconds. So it takes that many seconds for it to drop three mil, over almost 4 million feet. That is crazy. All right, I'm going to pause and I'll make a second video to finish off the last two problems.